Today's lesson is really basically on what pi is all about, and it's not just that ratio of circumference divided by the diameter. Now, we've used pi already. We've My name's Stuart pi. Cato. I'm head of mathematics at Emmaus College. We've about 1,200 students, I think. It's a slightly higher socioeconomic status, and it is a Catholic co-educational college. So have I got a volunteer? Thank you, Matthew. I Good. use the electronic whiteboard every lesson because it enables you to reflect on the lesson that you've just done and make changes directly onto the work that the students have done. Look at that pi, 3.14. Excellent. What happened to the other 399 decimal places? <laughs> you've left them out. <laughs> but that'll do. And it also gives the added sense of humour in the class because people can really get involved and then they accept the risk of coming out and they accept the risk of making mistakes and that's a fantastic way of learning. It gives them self-confidence, it gives them a chance to participate in the class and I want the students to actually come out to the board and use it. Oh, 30. That's a good start. So I thought I'd start out and I'd give you a little bit of a trick question because Matthew wrote down the circumference as pi d but I actually gave you a question where I gave you the radius. Oh, and look at that. Really good. So that's revision of work that you've done before. The interactive nature of the electronic whiteboard enables me to link lessons easily. With the interactive whiteboard, I can come in at the start of the lesson and I can show them what we did last lesson and that's the springboard for the next lesson. Class average value is 3.10. One of the main benefits of using the ICT is that I've got access to the internet and I've got access to additional resources that I would not have if I didn't have that in my classroom. Pi has appeared in history in lots and lots of ways. And there is actually an interesting relationship between the height of the pyramid and the base length. So Tim, can you take out your calculator please? And can you do this? This is a pyramid, the base is square. You would think it has nothing to do with circles. And yet, what answer do we get, Tim? 3.14157. Seven, that will do. And yet we've got a value for pi that the Egyptians had 4,600 years ago that's correct to four decimal places. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to find out what you've learned just today. The active expression devices give the students instant feedback, but they also enable me to analyse how the students have gone, which students have actually answered the questions correctly. The aim is not to actually get an answer and see who can we humiliate today. <laughs> I can then come back at the next lesson and I can show them the analysis, which is another thing that you can't do without the interactive whiteboard. And put in your answer. If you get it wrong, it won't be your fault. It'll be my fault because it'll indicate that I actually haven't taught this to you properly. So I'm under pressure now. Oh, it, was it was definitely James. James is trying to make me feel bad. The students just love it. They love participating. They love the instant feedback of who got things right and who didn't. That's the sort of thing that we can discuss as a class. Here, and there are no other bars, which means that everybody, thank goodness, everybody <laughs> actually got it right. The interactive nature of the electronic whiteboard enables me to link lessons easily. I felt today's lesson was successful because the students had responded well to the lesson preparation. I felt good because they'd answered the questions correctly. And I felt good because I can now go into the next lesson knowing that they have knowledge from the previous lesson that I can then build on. How do you use ICT to make content meaningful to students? What teaching strategies can you use to ensure learning programs are engaging and relevant to students?